One of the big things to come out of San Diego Comic-Con this year was... BOOBS! The announcement of the entire slate of upcoming movies, TV shows, video games, board games and toilet seat covers for Marvel Phase 5. Because, you know, we've got to keep that content pipeline pumping out sludge at full capacity, people. Don't let the audience breathe or think even for a second about what they've just seen. Go, go, go! Now, I have to admit, my first thought on hearing this was, wait, Phase 4's done? I mean, don't get me wrong, it feels like Marvel have pumped out more shit in the past couple of years than all previous phases put together. Not to mention proving the point that more doesn't necessarily equal better, but the thing that's been lacking in this phase is purpose. And I'm not talking about the fucking glorious purpose that Loki bangs on about. Every previous phase in the MCU has felt like an escalation of character, events and stakes, building and contributing to the overarching Infinity Saga storyline, and usually being capped off with a big blowout Avengers team-up movie to set up the next major story arc. It wasn't exactly revolutionary storytelling, but it was a solid and dependable structure that expanded the universe, delivered mostly satisfying payoffs, and teased the prospect of even bigger things to come. Phase 4, on the other hand, has felt like an extremely long-winded joke without a punchline, meandering through a series of disconnected plot threads and ideas with no clear plan of where it wanted to go or how to get there. It's like an entertainer that's got to the end of their set only to find out that they still have like half an hour of space to fill, so they're just throwing out whatever comes to mind and hoping that something lands properly. The franchise really needed to come out swinging after Endgame with a compelling new storyline and hard-hitting movies right off the bat to prove that there was still a reason for its own existence now that the Infinity Saga was over. Instead, they used their first movie to tell a pointless side story for a legacy character that was already dead, introduced the supposed focus of the entire phase using a goofy TV series on Disney Plus that only a fraction of their core audience even bothered to watch, and capped it all off with a Black Panther movie that doesn't even have Black Panther in it anymore. Anymore. Chadwick Boseman was simply irreplaceable as T'Challa. His death at such a young age was an absolute tragedy, and part of me can't help but think that the respectful thing to do might have been to just retire the character and leave his memory untarnished. But hey, I guess Disney feels differently, especially when there's still billions of dollars to be milked out of the character. Don't worry though, I'm sure it'll be another CULTURAL MOMENT, which is basically code for don't you dare criticise this movie in any way or you're gonna get labelled as every ist under the sun. We did learn a few things from Phase 4 though, like how it's okay to commit acts of terrorism, murder, illegal human experimentation, the psychological and physical torture of thousands of innocent people, and genocide on a multiversal scale, as long as you've got a vagina. Equality. It's fantastic when it only ever works in your favour. Complex global problems of poverty, population imbalance, resource distribution and historical discrimination can be solved simply by telling people that they need to do better. And sacrificing one life to protect literally all of existence is apparently a bad call. Well, I mean, only if you happen to be a man, of course. But hey, that's all in the past. Now we have an entirely new phase of mindless, pointless, directionless sludge written by mentally deficient children to look forward to. Like Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania. Remember Ant-Man? Remember how his movies are basically seen as the most obscure, lightweight and forgettable fluff in the whole MCU? And that's saying something at this point, believe me. Remember how he was basically written out of his own story and reduced to a background character for the second movie so that the writers could focus on far more important characters like the Wasp? Well, now he's back, and he's ready to be overshadowed, outperformed and belittled by his far more intelligent, capable and important female counterpart. Parts. Can't wait. Or how about the most likeable, flawed and relatable character of them all, Captain Marvel. You know, that scrappy, lovable underdog who can slice through city-sized battlecruisers, tank a punch from Thanos, and whose entire character arc was about throwing off the shackles of society and learning to accept her own awesomeness. Can't wait to see the writers try to construct an interesting story out of a character that's basically Superman without the kryptonite, played by an actress with all the likability of my underwear after a bout of chronic food poisoning, and and directed by a woman with a grand total of two film credits to her name. <laughs> Fucking train wreck doesn't even come close to this one. That being said, they should probably get a move on though, because if her appearance in Ms. Marvel was anything to go by, Brie Larson might actually blink out of existence before the movie even gets released. Damn man, someone get this girl a cheeseburger, stat! Or how about Captain America, New World Order? Want to see Sam Wilson trade in a cool and unique character of his own so that he can be a cheap carbon copy of someone else instead? 
dead? Nah, me neither. Giving him the shield in Endgame felt cheap, manipulative and forced as fuck at the time, and absolutely nothing has changed since then. And it's such a shame, because Anthony Mackie is a really good actor, he was awesome as Falcon, but he's nothing more than a second-rate pretender as Cap. As far as I'm concerned, Steve Rogers is, was and always will be the one and only Captain America. But hey, remember Blade? Remember how he basically kicked off the modern era of superhero movies back in 1998 with an R-rated action film that was dark and violent and gory? Remember how he was played to perfection by Wesley Snipes, giving the world an awesome black superhero 20 years before Black Panther came along to take all the glory? Yeah, well, forget about that, because now we have the modern Disney-fied version to look forward to. Because trying to fit this character into the light-hearted, family-friendly MCU sounds about as feasible as trying to hold a prayer meeting at a BDSM club. The two just aren't gonna mesh with each other, and if something has to give, I suspect it'll be Blade's dark and violent tone. In which case, it's just not Blade as far as I'm concerned. But on the plus side, at least we've got the TV shows to look forward to, right? Like Loki Season 2. You enjoyed watching one of the coolest and most interesting antagonists of the MCU getting turned into a whiny, emotional, insecure and dumb as fuck sidekick whose only function is to get humiliated, broken down and outclassed by his superior female opponent, right? Well, can't wait for a whole new season of that. Or how about Ironheart? Ever wondered what would happen if Iron Man was a flawless, idealised teenage prodigy named Mary Sue? Sorry, Riri? Nah, me neither. Can't wait to see how the show tries to convince us that Riri is smarter and more talented and more capable than Tony Stark ever was, while taking subtle digs at the flaws in his personality to slowly break down our perception of him. Not a great plan. Fuck off, Ironheart. You're never gonna fill Tony's shoes, and all you're ever gonna be seen as is a cheap plastic imitation of something far better. Or how about Echo, the story of a deaf mute protagonist who can't communicate with other people in any meaningful way, who has to go back to her hometown and reconnect with her Native American roots? Yeah, thrilling stuff. Almost as thrilling as Agatha Harkness, the ridiculous pantomime villain from WandaVision that's apparently got her own spin-off show now. Because it was Agatha all along, don't you know? Honestly, how long is it going to be until we get a series about young Obadiah? Or Red Skull, the early years? Or the continuing story of fake Mandarin from Iron Man 3? Where does all this stuff end? Oh yeah, it doesn't. And I guess that's the real takeaway from phase 5, 6, 7 and who knows how many more. It'll never stop. Disney are just going to keep churning this stuff out, becoming ever more lazy and complacent, slotting new actors into familiar roles, rebooting entire franchises and universes, trampling over beloved characters and storylines, rewriting past events to fit current trends, sacrificing quality storytelling with universal appeal to pander to whatever political cause happens to be in vogue that week. They'll do all of this stuff and more because people let them get away with it. They'll never stop and they'll never improve as long as audiences keep paying to see what they make. It's the bachelor chow of entertainment, the lowest common denominator, designed to be mass produced quickly and easily, and consumed in exactly the same way. Guys like myself, Mahler, Nerdrotic and others tried to warn you that this was coming. We could see the cracks appearing even before Endgame, but it was like trying to stop a runaway train with a feather duster. The momentum was too strong, the brand loyalty too entrenched, the piles of money too big. And well, I hope it was all worth it, because those piles of money may start getting a lot smaller as time goes by. The law of diminishing returns seems to have claimed the MCU at last. The box office returns for Phase 4 have been dwarfed by their predecessors. Black Widow, Shang-Chi and the Eternals all failed to break even, despite what the mainstream media would have you believe. Thor Love and Thunder is underperforming badly right now, and Doctor Strange 2 only got as far as it did by coasting on the momentum of No Way Home. The only movie of this phase to crack a billion dollars and it wasn't even made by Marvel. Even the endless deluge of lazy, hastily written TV shows designed to plug the gap has done nothing but dilute a once invincible brand. But you know what? I'm perfectly fine with that. Every genre in Hollywood has its time to shine and its time to fade. Sooner or later people get tired of things no matter how popular they once were. It happened to westerns, it happened to war movies, and sooner or later it'll happen to superhero films. Maybe it's going to take a while but the decline is absolutely happening, and if phase 5 is anything to go by, well, that decline may come a lot quicker than anyone expects. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.